I've been banging on for a long time about the advantages of lithium iron phosphate battery cells, and I've been banging on about how Elon Musk says that they are the batteries of the future. So why is it that Tesla can so easily pivot to using lithium iron phosphate batteries in their cars, and yet other automakers are not yet doing it? Well, there's one key reason that Tesla has an advantage over its over legacy automakers who are currently building EVs, and that is the one reason that they are able to pivot so quickly to LFP while others have not. Hello, my friends. You are watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to the channel. Fantastic to have you here on board. And welcome to all the new subscribers that have come on board recently. There's been about an average of 300 new subscribers coming to the channel every day over the last month. It's fantastic to see all of you here on the channel. Remember, we have over 600 videos recorded over the, over the last six months alone. And there's a lot of information there that you probably haven't heard of about electric pickups, electric cars, battery technology, things that are all coming soon and that you probably want to check out. So make sure you check out some of those other videos. Now I'll put some links in the description below to other videos I've made about LFP batteries. So if you're not fully up to scratch on LFP batteries and why they are the battery chemistry of the future, then you can learn about that from clicking on those links. Now, this key characteristic allows Tesla to use LFP batteries. Other manufacturers might struggle to make the switch. Apparently, they have been struggling without doing a lot of work. Now, Mark Kane from Inside EVs reports that we know that Tesla offers one of the longest range and most energy efficient electric cars in the world. Now, Tesla is very quickly expanding its production and sales while its products are continuously evolving. That's one of the things I love about Tesla vehicles, the fact that um, they don't wait for a new model to make changes. They make them on the production line constantly. That to me is a big difference between Tesla and its competitors. Last month, Tesla officially announced the switch of all standard range entry level versions of its cars to LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry globally. Now, Elon was actually asked on Twitter, which model would you purchase? Which model would you prefer to own, the LFP model or the non-LFP, the ternary, lithium ternary battery? And, and Elon said for a number of reasons, LFP for sure. And I agree, personally, if I had the choice, I would definitely pick the LFP version. Now, LFP batteries, like those used by BYD in their blade battery, are less expensive than some of the other lithium ion chemistries. In fact, quite a bit ex less expensive when compared to NCA and NCM chemistries. One reason for that, they don't use cobalt. Now, what are the benefits? Well, they offer a high cycle life. That is the biggest benefit. You get about twice as many charges out of the battery versus NCA and NCM and other chemistry type lithium batteries. Another big advantage that people don't often talk about, I don't often see this spoken about in other videos or forums or anything, I don't know why, but it's incredibly crucial. With an LFP battery, you can literally charge it to 100% and discharge to 0% with almost no battery degradation losses. You can do this constantly. But with NCA and NCM chemistries and other chemistries out there on the market, you can't do that. You need to charge it to the point where you're not going below about 10 to 20% state of charge, not above 80% routinely. Otherwise, you'll see significant battery degradation. Other advantages are you can fast charge them without really hurting the battery. Obviously, NCA and NCM chemistry batteries, if you fast charge them too many times, you're going to get quite a bit of battery degradation. But there is a disadvantage, and that is lower energy density. However, energy density has been improving over the last couple of years. So now automakers who in the past shunned LFP batteries are starting to go, hang on a minute. Yeah, maybe they're a good idea after all. They're cheaper. And another key reason automakers are now shifting to LFP or trying to is because they are definitely safer. Most, about 95% of the battery fires reported have come from batteries from non-Chinese companies. CATL and BYD primarily make lithium iron phosphate batteries. Most of the car fires have been in batteries from Panasonic, LG Chem, and SK Innovation, who all make 
non-LFP batteries. Now, interestingly, those companies are now trying to pivot into LFP. Now, here's an interesting thing pointed out by ARK Invest via Sawyer Merit, that Tesla, through its focus on energy efficiency, is uniquely positioned to be able to widely adapt and profit from LFP batteries. We believe that Tesla is positioned uniquely for LFP chemistry because of its industry-leading drivetrain technology and efficiency. Superior efficiency suggests that unlike its competition, Tesla will offer acceptable range at lower prices with LFP batteries. Now, one example that comes to mind for me right now is the Tesla Model S Plaid or the current Tesla Model S and Model X. It has slightly longer range than the old model, but the battery is smaller. So how on earth has Tesla done that? Because they are constantly focusing on efficiency. Now, it's very baffling when you have a look at EVs and you realize that many EVs with big batteries don't have a long range. And you think, why on earth is what's going on? This doesn't make sense. Well, one of the key reasons is there's lots of little things in a car that you can do to make it more efficient. And Tesla's vehicles are almost always more efficient than the competition. Because of this, Tesla can simply use a lower energy density battery chemistry in a standard range car and still provide a decent range, more than 250 miles or over 400 kilometers. So Insert EVs says, other manufacturers might struggle to make such a switch because their models are not efficient enough, especially if built using general car platforms not dedicated to EVs. I've been banging on about this for a long time now. If you're a car manufacturer and you make an EV based on a petrol, diesel, or gas vehicle, then it just doesn't work very well. And I've pointed out in the past, car manufacturers are still doing this. It is not a good idea. It's better to build the vehicle from the ground up. It really, really doesn't make sense to try and convert an ICE vehicle and turn it into an electric vehicle. We can already see it. As many EVs have battery packs bigger than Tesla, higher battery capacity, which offer a similar or lower range than Tesla models. It comes at a price. Higher weight equals higher cost. It also limits the options with LFP packs because consumers will not necessarily be willing to buy a 150 to 200 mile electric vehicle. In fact, they don't in general unless they're little micro cars and they're paying a lot less money, like for example in China, where you can get a micro car with a 150 mile range for 5,000 US dollars. That's a totally different market. Manufacturers must achieve a certain efficiency level to be able to adapt LFP batteries to their entry level EVs and remain competitive. It has its implications because to improve efficiency, OEMs would have to go all in with refined design and probably a lot of vertical integration which none of them have. I mean, the only companies with vertical integration in the world are Tesla and, well, BYD in vertical integration is much higher than Tesla's. And to be honest, it makes you realize the distinct advantage that companies like Tesla and BYD have over the competition. So what does this all lead to? At least to a couple of things. One, Tesla is able to build its cars more efficiently. It's able to change to a battery chemistry which is much cheaper and in demand, it's able to actually provide more vehicles. That's a big problem. Getting enough cells to build enough vehicles right now is a huge problem. But there is an abundance of lithium iron phosphate cells on the market. Therefore, because Tesla's pivoting to those for its standard range model cars, it can therefore provide more cars. Obviously, manufacturers right now just cannot provide anywhere near enough cars to meet customer demand. In Australia, it's an enormous problem. Most EVs are not sold here simply because there isn't enough vehicles to sell here. And when they are sold here, they're sold in extremely limited quantities. The only car maker selling them here in non-limited quantities is Tesla. And coincidentally, they, are, they take up about 70% of our electric car market as a result. Now, remember, another key thing for Tesla here is profit. Profit matters. Why? Profit gives you cash to build more factories, to build more batteries, to build the machines, to make the machine. And Tesla's industry margins are around 30%. Average margins are 8 to 10. There is no other legacy automaker in the world right now selling EVs that has a margin above 11%. 
Tesla, on the other hand, makes three times that amount of money. Now, the fact that they're now able to pivot to LFP batteries to offer more affordable EVs while still maintaining margin matters. Now, one other characteristic that has allowed Tesla to use LFP for its standard range models is that the extra space that was created to allow for longer range models means there's more size in the base of the vehicle. Therefore, you can fit the larger LFP pack into the vehicle without changing its structure and changing a whole bunch of things. That is maybe something Tesla kind of lucked into, or maybe they actually thought that through as well. Now, Tesla also has very efficient motors in its vehicles and aerodynamic vehicles. Now, the silicon carbide MOSFET motors that Tesla use and other optimizations have helped give Tesla longer range than their competitors. And that's something Tesla has worked on for many, many, many years. Combine that with filling the big battery bay designed for a long range battery with a lower energy density, inexpensive, extremely inexpensive LFP battery. And you have an excellent base model electric car with an excellent range. Right now, you can get a range of 267 miles with a Tesla Model 3 with an LFP battery. And that is industry leading for its size. Now, I hope you've learned something from this video. I've enjoyed putting it together and talking about LFP batteries, which, as you know, I'm a big fan of. Now, thank you again for subscribing and watching and supporting the channel. What I want to know is in the comment section below, what EV are you looking at? What are you considering? And does that EV that you want have LFP batteries? If it did have them, would you prefer those or not? Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.